everyone, it's Mrs. Conway. So, so far we have hopefully gotten really good at finding slope, slope of a line. Um, and I think I said earlier that from now on we're pretty much going to be dealing with linear functions. And so the next step is now to take your slope and be able to write the equation of a line or to be able to look at the equation of a line and graph that line. So today we're going to just practice what is slope intercept form, how do you know that a line is in slope intercept form, and then how to graph a line from slope intercept form so that our next lesson can be how to write the equation of a line by looking at the graph. So hopefully you've all heard slope intercept form before. You, you might not have might not remember it's called slope intercept form, but I bet when I say this next part, you're all going to remember y equals mx plus b, and that is slope intercept form. So hopefully you remember y equals mx plus b, that's slope intercept form, because m is the slope and b is the <laughs> y-intercept. Apparently people felt like slope y-intercept form would be too long, so you do have to remember that when we talk about intercept, we're talking about the y-intercept and that's really important because that's one of the number one mistakes I see people make when we do this. Okay so when we're looking at slope intercept form um, we need to have an equation where it starts with y equals. That's kind of your um, big indicator that it's in slope intercept form and so the reason you need to know if something's in slope intercept form is because what I'm going to teach you to graph only works if the line is in slope intercept form and um, there's lots of ways to write equations of lines. So here's four line equations and let's look at these and think which ones are in slope intercept form. So I'm just, I just want you to hit pause for a second and look at those equations and decide which ones you think are in slope intercept form. Okay, so let's look at this first one first. I said slope intercept form should have y equals. This does have y equals, but it's not the first thing, and it is important that y is the first thing. This is actually in standard form, so the issue here, this x, is why it's not in slope intercept, and if you just want to make a note for yourself, this is called standard form. We will learn about standard form in the next unit. So let's look at this next one. Does it start with y equals? Yes, it does. So it is in slope intercept form. And the reason why is because it starts with y equals. Okay, and then also it is important, but not as important, that it has number x plus or minus a number. All right, let's look at this one. Does it start with y equals? No. Um, actually, nothing about this would look like slope intercept form. So not slope intercept. And this isn't, isn't in any form. Um, in no world is it okay to leave a linear equation written like this. So this would have to be rearranged before you could do anything with it because it's not in slope intercept, it's not in standard form. This doesn't really tell me anything. The only reason I even know it's linear is because I can look here and see that x is doesn't have a power on it or anything. Um, y or doesn't start with y equals. Okay, now this last one is confusing because it's got y equals but it doesn't have an x it's still in standard form. You can have a linear function actually even that doesn't have an x. Um, so this is in standard form. Um, the slope is actually zero because you could think of this like y equals zero x minus four. We just don't write zero x because there's no x's so why would we talk about them? So this is in standard form or sorry, this is in slope intercept form. It's actually in standard form too. There's only one way to write that equation. Um, so yes, slope. Okay, so hopefully you've kind of got an idea of what slope intercept form is. It's basically y equals something x plus a number. So now we're going to talk about once it's in slope intercept form, you need to be able to identify the slope and the y-intercept. And there's two big mistakes people make here. One would be like just getting them mixed up. The other is when you write your slope, you don't write x. Slope is the number in front of x. It's the number we're multiplying x by. So let's look at our first example here. Um, identify the slope and y-intercept for each equation. Okay, so when we're looking at number six, 
the slope is the number in front of x. Well, if there's nothing written in front of x except a negative, remember, that's the same thing as negative 1x. So our slope is negative 1. And remember, slope is m. So this m equals is talking about slope. b is talking about y-intercept, because if we come back up here, b is the y-intercept. OK, so then b is a little easier. It's just this number right here. So it's negative 3. And you do have to take into account the negative. Don't just grab the number. If it says minus 3, it's negative. If it says plus, it's positive. OK, so let's look at number 7. I want you to think for a second. What do you think the slope is? There's nothing in front of x. So the number in front of x would be 1, right? Because if you don't write anything, it's a 1. So m is 1 and b is 2, OK? So now let's get down to number 8. y equals 1 third x. OK, well, so for this one, um, our slope, it should be pretty obvious, is the number in front of x is 1 third. If there's a fraction in front of x, write the whole fraction. But there's nothing out here. If I'm not adding anything, that would be 0, right? I, I, the only number I wouldn't write there would be 0. So if there's nothing being added out here, then b is 0. That means that this line will go through the origin. OK, and this last one should be pretty easy. I want you to write down what you think it is and then check your answer with me. So hopefully you got negative 7 over 3 for the slope and then negative 5 for the y-intercept. All right, so now what I want you to do is I want you to do the first set of problems on delta math. What I just went over here should get you through question 19 on the delta math assignment. I know that sounds like a lot, but they're all questions like this, where you just have to identify the slope and the y-intercept. Some of them are actually just like fill in what we did on the notes here and make sure you understand what I did. So um, maybe have these notes available. Go do the first part of the delta math assignment. That's up through question 19. And then when you're done with those, the next video will show you how to do question 20 and the last little problem set of problems. So good luck.